Any talk? Why not? Do you feel you'd like to tell me the story now? You got a cigarette? Can he smoke? Why not? Do not let his why not attitude alarm you. Dr. Allende is the finest surgeon we have in Puerto Rosario. I would wait, but I must have your story, Senor Cormac. Where should I start? Anywhere you wish. Let's see. <clears throat> I remember the first time I met Janie. Janet. She was a kid down the block, sweet, helpless, you know. I was just out of the service and back in law school. Seems like I was always going to bat for her. But that's going too far back. Where I really ought to begin is in Vegas last Friday night. Hard to believe it was only last Friday. The strip was jumping. Like it always does at the start of a hot weekend. I was in my usual spot circulating around the casino at the Blue Diamond. Don't tell me I've been drinking. I know a crooked wheel when I see one. No wheel that ain't break comes up double O twice in a row. Not so loud, sir. What do you mean, not so loud? When I get Jim, I don't whisper about it. I'm sure this can be handled without trouble, sir. What's it to you? I'm a special security officer here. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there ain't nothing special about you. This wheel is crooked. These wheels and games are inspected by the state, sir. Oh, yeah? Well, I say it's crooked. And I'm going to get back the 50 I lost. Or what? Or I'll raise the biggest you ever heard. Hey, everybody! <laughs> Mr. Cormack, hmm? you tied. Thanks, Jimmy. Mr. Cormack? Yes. Mr. Boslin would like to see you. Mr. Boslin? Who's that? This way, please. You brought him. Good. Uh, Mr. Cormack. I wish to indulge in a little conversation with you. What about? Would $5,000 be considered a valid topic for conversation? It wouldn't offend my ears. Very good. Very good indeed. I think we shall get along. Uh, Lawrence? Now, Mr. Cormack, I have captured your interest by talking of $5,000. $5,000 which, mind you, you may earn. You've captured my interest. Then we may proceed? Uh, peanuts? No, thank you. My proposal to you must be prefaced by a little story which I trust you will find not uninteresting. You have heard of a place on the Caribbean called Puerto Rosario? Vaguely. An associate of mine down there owed me a considerable amount of money. In lieu of payment, it was arranged that he should send me a certain very valuable carved ruby that he had in his possession. My associates arranged to have the ruby shipped by a private plane which belonged to certain persons in Puerto Rosario who had carried out a similar business for us before. Delivery of the ruby was made to them. Then, on the eve of departure, there was an accident to the plane. It was destroyed. And would you believe it, the ruby disappeared. Not a trace. And you think the owners of the plane stole the ruby? Uh, Without a doubt. Therefore, my proposition to you. You go to Puerto Rosario, win the confidence of the persons I suspect, and locate the ruby. For this, I give you 
$5,000. $1,000 now, $4,000 when it is a fait accompli. It sounds very simple, but uh, how do you expect me to accompli it? Well, that should not be too difficult. The owner of the plane is Eduardo Martin. I'm told that you were once well acquainted with his wife, Janet. <laughs> I am thorough, if nothing else, Mr. Cormac. Oh, did you imagine I chose you for the cut of your jacket? This dossier was compiled with the expenditure of much time and money. The story of your life, as it were. I'm beginning to get the point. Until two years ago, the subject, Mike Cormac, was assistant district attorney of Los Angeles. Engaged for three years to Janet Erskine. He was waiting until he obtained a promotion to marry her. He had it all there. Now she met this knock -em dead international flyer, Eduardo Martin. How he swept her off her feet, how they eloped, and I never saw her again. I don't think she knew then that he made his money by doing a little smuggling for guys like Barcelona. She, uh, she didn't even send me a note. Maybe it was true love that made her so forgetful. Anyway, thanks. I went on the granddaddy of all binges. Seven months of alcoholic oblivion. Only a friend cleaned me up, took me to Vegas and got me a job. Kind of a high-class bouncer. But uh, it was a living. I was just beginning to feel human again when Barcelona showed up. For the past four months, subject has been employed at Blue Diamond Club as special security officer. The salary, 87... 87 50 a week. You've got it all there. No corrections. So you see now why I thought you might be persuaded. Sure. Because of my special appeal to Janet Martin, you think I might be able to finagle the ruby out of her. And because she made a jerk out of me once, you think I might welcome the opportunity to get even. And to earn $5,000. I think I'd be allergic to prison food. But you will be doing nothing illegal, Mr. Cormac. All you are asked to do is to find the ruby and to let me know. We require nothing further of you. I see. Are that it's settled? I should have run like a rabbit. But the minute he mentioned Janet, I knew I'd accept his lousy proposition. I had to see her again to get the bitterness out of my system, to even the score. That's what I told myself. Before I knew it, I was on a plane for Puerto Rosario. And with full and complete instructions. He even had my hotel picked out. You'd think he was sending me on a pleasure trip. Advised me to insist on a front room, where, from the balcony, the travel folders said, I would be able to enjoy the scenic vista across the cliffs. To the ocean and the sea islands and nearer at hand the colorful activity in the town plaza hey boy come here see senor solid see solid see what is it a convention the association of electronic musical instrumentation that's nice what's that jukebox salesman jukebox jukebox very popular in puerto Rotario. do they all have to play at once they demonstrate new models one begins the other has to show off his model too also Solid. Hey, come back, come back. Are, si, there, senor. are there many Americans in, in Puerto Rosario? Fifteen, twenty. Did you ever hear of the Martins? I hear. You know where they live? See. Si. You see that road? She winds up on top of the hill, right on the edge, over the ocean. That big white house. And that's the Martins' home. See. Si. Thank you. Gracias, senor. Your key. Don't forget, the name is Lalo. See, he asked about senora Martin. So soon he checks in. Name is Cormac. Mike Cormac. C O R M. A C K. Cormac. Yes, I have it. No, that won't be necessary. Just keep your eyes open. 
Good, Lalo. Se llama Cormac. Muy bien, señor. I didn't want to go directly to Janet. I figured the meeting should seem casual, accidental. But Rosario wasn't a very big town. If I acted like a tourist, I was bound to run into her before long, so uh, I acted like a tourist. That means it plays 100 records, senor, and it is a very, very good machine. Ah, oh, buenos dias, senor. Senor, I would like to show you our latest model. Premier Tom. This machine has more lights than any other one of the place. Sensational, no? Sensational, yeah. The senor, the Imperial. The best machine in all South America. Senor. If you have a small place, or a large place, well, this machine will fit any place. Senor, the best of all, Nacional. Senor, let me tell you about Buster. the price of Buster. this wonderful machine. Buster. I'm just looking. Senor, senor, take a look at this. It's the best machine of all. Let me, uh, senor, aquí es la mejor de todo el mundo. You wish? <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> He's pretty cute. Well, it's in your oh, nice. See? Si. Make this yourself? It's si, easy, senor. In the morning I make, in the afternoon I sell. Very nice work. How much? 35 cents each. Very reasonable, too. Oh, si, senor. Make good souvenirs. Si, si. How much for all of them? For all? You want all of them? 50 cents each. 50 cents? I don't get it. You, you want more for all of them? Senor. If I sell one by one, it will take me all day, yes? Yes. If I sell all at one time, I can go home to my wife early. Right now, yes? I guess so. So, I sell one by one. I get your point. I tell you. I'm at the Hotel Rosario. Si. You bring me one of these over every day. Si. And that'll solve your problem and mine, okay? Okay. <laughs> Gracias, senor. Gracias. Janet. Janet Martin. Janet threw me a curve with that act in the market. I hadn't decided what my next move would be when the play was taken right out of my hands. Senor Cormac? That's my name. The senora wishes to see you. I thought she didn't know me. I will drive you, senor.
Miguel? Sí. Abre la puerta. Mamá, dile a la señora que el señor está aquí. Sí. Abrite el de señora. I won't be needing you anymore tonight, Miguel. Well, Jenny. Mike. Mike, I am glad to see you. This afternoon in the market, I don't know, seeing you all of a sudden, everything rushed back, I, well, I felt dizzy. I know how you feel. Yeah. Maybe a sense of guilt, too. I treated you rather badly and... Don't forget it. I was a little bitter. <laughs> a little bitter. I wanted to break your neck. Then when I got to thinking what Eduardo had to offer, wealth, glamour, and that sort of thing, against what I had, I, I uh, figured most any girl would do what you did. By the way, where is Eduardo? I'm a real scatterbrain. You've been here five minutes. I haven't even offered you a drink. No, thanks. No drink? A slice of lemon, some soda water, if you got it. I'm going to have one even if you don't. I need one. Dropping out of the blue like this. Funny, isn't it? What's funny? Well, I never used to drink, remember? And you, Mike Cormack, who could drink with the best of them. Taking soda water. It's just funny. Well, times change. People, too. You asked about Eduardo. Yes, I did. He's not here. He's in prison. What did he do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mike. About 15 miles out there is an island. Sometimes you can see a light. I don't see anything. That's where he is. In a penal colony. Convicted of a crime he didn't commit. Too bad. How long is he in for? Life. Do you want to talk about it? First few months with Eddie were wonderful. He was kind, sweet, got me anything I wanted. He seemed to have all kinds of money. What business was he in? He and a partner operated two charter planes. It was about six months ago when Eddie had a run of bad luck. I told him we'd sell the house, my furs, anything, but no. With Eddie, everything had to be first cabin or not at all. I know the type. Well, Eddie sold one plane and mortgaged the other. A man named Emilio Fernandez held the mortgage. When Eddie couldn't pay, Fernandez threatened to take his plane away from him. Eddie needed it desperately right then for an important charter. So we met Fernandez in a bar one night and swore in front of a dozen witnesses that if he took his plane away from him, why he'd kill him. That was real smart. Mm. Thank you. He'd been drinking. So Fernandez went to the airport the next day to take the plane to fly to another city. He got 100 feet off the ground and crashed. Fernandez was killed. And in court it was proved that someone had tampered with the gas tank switches. Makes a rather open and shut case against your husband, doesn't it? It's purely circumstantial, Mike. Eddie's innocent, I know it. He'd die out there on that island. It's damp and crawly. He's sick now. How you fix for money, Janie? Not that I could help a lot, but I'd like to help if I could. Mike. Mike, you make me feel ashamed. After the way I treated you, I... I said forget it. I did. 
I'm all right for a while. But here I've been talking about myself and my troubles, and I haven't even asked what you're doing here in Puerto Rosario. I came down for a couple of weeks fishing, that's all. I didn't know you were a fisherman. Oh, there are a few things you didn't know about me, Janie. Oh. I suppose you had other girls all the time you were making love to me. Of course. I thought you knew that. It looks like I caught my first fish. What are you doing back there, cooking an omelet? Let him go, Mike. Mr. Cormack is a friend, Miguel. Now go to bed. Miguel is my housekeeper's son. He's very devoted to me. I can see that. I'm glad he stays in this house. Ever since Fernandez was killed, his family have been very vindictive. Somehow they, they blame me. I'm frightened, Mike. I hope you're exaggerating, Janie. But you always did have a pretty good imagination. I'd better run along before the neighbors start talking. Mike. You have to go? I'll see you soon. Better. You will. Mike. Yeah. Never mind. See you soon. should have been elated about her hard luck with Eduardo. I wasn't. I felt sorry for her. I knew she hadn't given me the whole story. But I didn't think it was smart to talk to her about the ruby. Not yet. I rented a Puerto Rosario U-Drive special that the owner kept referring to as the beauty. I hoped the beauty would get me as far as the airport, where I figured I could learn some more about the Eduardo plane crash. I found Eduardo had employed a mechanic named Carlos Penasco from time to time. I drove the beauty to Carlos's shack, not far from the airport. I want to talk to Carlos Penasco. No está aquí. Ya hace un ratito que se fue. I'm sorry, my Spanish isn't very good. Do you speak English? Ricardo! Ricardo! Aquí estoy. ¿Qué quiere el hombre? What you want? Carlos Peñasco, the mechanic. I want to talk to him. Quiero hablar con Carlos. ¿De qué? For why you want to talk? I want to talk to him about the accident where Fernandez was killed. Quiere preguntarle a Carlos de la muerte del señor Fernandez. Carlos no sabe nada. Carlos don't know nothing. Ask her if he ever mentioned anything about, about a ruby. About a what? About a ruby, a, a gem, a, a precious stone. Oh, yubi. ¿Ha dicho Carlos algo de un yubi? No, 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 no. I'd like to talk to him personally. He uh, might make some money. Oh, sí, gracias. About one hour ago, he takes his fighting cock and goes away. Later, you find him at the cockfight. Thanks. By the way, who makes those? Carlos make them when there's no work at airport. We sell them in market. Kind of cute. ¿Por qué le has dicho en dónde se ha ido Carlos? Anda enseguida. Dile que el hombre estaba buscando a Carlos. Ándale, ándale. If it hadn't been for the beauty's decision to act up right then, I wouldn't have noticed how angry the old lady got with Ricardo. Evidently, for what he had told me. Kid took off toward town. I couldn't follow him because he went across country. And besides, 
The sleeping beauty refused to wake up. It was easy enough to find the cockfight. And it was just as easy to find Carlos Penasco. It seems that his bird was the undefeated champion of Whip Rosario. And Carlos was by way of being a celebrity. They tell me that you're Carlos Penasco. Si, senor, I am Carlos. I'd like to have a little talk with you. But there's nothing to talk about, senor. My little Napoleon, he's going to win the battle. So you can bet all you wish without worrying yourself. One stop of his little sword. Finish! <laughs> But I want to talk some business. Business? What kind of business? Well, you might make a lot of money. A lot of money? I listen. See you after the fight, huh? Oh, time for fight. You make a better Napoleon, and you will win. You meet me here. Fair enough. <laughs> Senator Cormac, big night tonight, see? Solid. What's he saying? What's he saying? That's what he's saying. Silencio! Silencio! Señoras y señores, hemos tenido un accidente. Las puertas se cerrarán y por favor todos permanezcan en su lugar hasta que la policía llegue. Señor Cormac, Capitán Peña. I regret the inconvenience to a visitor. Not at all. It's very tiring to interrogate each person attending the cockfight. Thank you. Very odd. A very unusual murder weapon, don't you think so? What is it? In my profession, I have encountered many devices. Guns, knife, ingenious traps, but never this. Oh, this is a steel spur. It is sometimes attached to the natural spur of a fighting bird to give it greater killing power. Your light, excuse me. Thank you. Captain, there's something I should tell you. I was at Penasco's home this afternoon. This I am aware, but I'm glad you told me. Shall we get to the point, Senor Cormac? Of course. You arrive in Puerto Rosario. You call on Carlos Peñasco this afternoon. You speak to Carlos Peñasco this evening. And a few minutes later, Carlos Peñasco is killed. Do you wish to tell me why you called on the murdered man? In the interest of a client. A client? Yes, I'm a lawyer. You can check the California roster if you wish. Proceed, your client. Mrs. Eduardo Martin. Ah. I wanted to find out what I could from Panasco about the Fernandez plane crash. For what purpose? Uh, to reopen the case, if possible. Mrs. Martin thinks her husband got a raw deal. A raw deal? She thinks he's innocent. Innocent. <laughs> Mrs. Martin, I have always found very interesting. Now I am fascinated. She possibly also feels her husband received an unfair trial. Possibly. In all my career as a criminologist, I have never encountered anyone who is more uninnocent. Twenty witnesses here at Eduardo Martin make threats to kill Fernandez if he takes the airplane. Fernandez takes it and he is killed. But Fernandez was a very rich man. He might have had enemies that took advantage of Martin's unfortunate threat. He might have had, but he didn't. This I know for sure, because I myself made the arrest of Eduardo Martin. 
We laid a trap for him and he walked into it. He came back to the wreckage with the smell of charred flesh still hanging over and tried to restore the tampered fuel switches so that the cause of the accident would not be discovered. Is this the act of an innocent man? I didn't know that. It's all here in this file. You may read it if you wish. I'm sorry my information was incomplete. If you reopen Martin's case, that will be your own responsibility. However, I must inform you that we have new and other evidence against Martin which could be additionally damaging. The airplane was used several times for transporting illegal merchandise. Smuggling, you mean? Yes. We were never able to catch him in the act, however. Undoubtedly, Mrs. Martin has been advised in this foolish business by Paul Armand. Yes. Undoubtedly, Armand is advising her. You can tell him for me he's a fool. Completely ridiculous. Will that be all? About Panasco, I mean? For the present, yes. Of course, you will not try to leave Puerto Rosario. Of course. There was as much chance of my trying to leave Puerto Rosario as of hitting a hard way 10, for three reasons. Number two, I wanted to know what I had to do with Carlos's murder. Number three, I wanted to earn that five grand from Biceland. And I wanted to see Janet again. By now, that was number one. But first, I thought I'd look up this Paul Armand that Peña had thrown at me. a look at Pete there. Pete? Yeah, a little guy in the window. I don't know what it is about him, but he, he sure tickles me. He is rather amusing, isn't he? <laughs> he and his brothers are scattered all over town. No, not this little guy. He's original pre-Columbian, right out of the ancient Romes. Oh. Well, he certainly looks like his brothers. Where, may I ask, would you have seen his brothers? The marketplace, home of Mrs. Eduardo Martin. Well, then you must be Michael Cormack. I didn't know I was famous. I'm Paul Armand. Eduardo and I were partners in the aviation business. Mrs. Martin, uh, Janice, is my very dear friend. Oh. As a matter of fact, only this afternoon she was telling me all about you. Good, I hope. Mrs. Martin is a woman of rare taste. If she tells me that you're a friend of hers, then you must be worthy of that friendship. Uh, you were very close to her husband, weren't you? Like brothers. Do you think he was guilty of wrecking that plane? Why do you ask whether Eduardo was guilty of wrecking that plane? Janet thinks he's innocent. Without actually being an eyewitness, I'd be inclined to agree with him. On what grounds? By the very chemistry of the man. He was a spoiled child of much boasting, of many words, even of threats, but never of deeds. Eduardo could never have killed anyone. No, thanks. You seem very positive. I lived with a man before his marriage. We were like brothers. He's very much like me. In what way? Verbally, I'm a lion. Philosophically, I do not waver. But when it comes to physical action, Eduardo could no more have planned the death of Fernandez than I could. And why would he return to the Rudge and attempt to conceal evidence of tampering with the fuel switches? It's not revealed in you. I don't know. It sounds cockeyed to me. I thought if you could shed some new light on the subject, I might be able to reopen the case. I wish I could. 
Are you interested in semi-precious stones? Some are precious stones, no. If you had something in the way of rubies. Rubies? Not afraid not. A little too rich for my poor shop. Like Janet, you too are a person of rare taste. Thank you. Senor. We will get her on the phone for you. Hello, Janet. Mike. I'm glad you got my message. I must see you. In an hour? How about Rosalbo's? Well, it's a little eating place near the plaza. I'll be there. I've made a terrible mistake. I've missed you very much. Janie, the... No, no. Don't stop me. I want to tell you. You know, I should have left Eddie and gone back home and asked you to forgive me, if you could. But I just don't have that kind of courage. Pardon me, senor. We play for you. You like love songs for the senorita, huh? Sure. Go ahead. Gracias. <laughs> Así cual muere en occidente los tibios rayos del astro rey. Paren muchachos, no toquen. Para esta mujer no tocamos. Vente. It's all it's about. What this woman gonna play for? What do you mean, this woman? For a woman like there, we don't pay. Take you home? Your place. Here. Thanks. What's with that character at the cafe? It's nothing new. The whole town blamed me for Fernanda's death. Why? I don't know. He was a very popular man from a thank you, very prominent family. It's been rough, Mike. Why don't you leave? I can't. Not with Eddie in prison. I, I couldn't do that. But you said you didn't love him. You're the only one who can. How? Get him off the island. Help him to escape. Take it easy, baby. As long as he's in prison, I'll never be free. Mike, help him to escape. Please. I know you can do it. Once he's free, I'll do anything you want. You're lying, Janie. No, Mike. That he's guilty and you know it. No. If you'd level with me, maybe I could help. Why didn't you tell me Pena caught him red-handed? Why did he confess? Because he's innocent? Mikey is innocent. He didn't tamper with that fuel switch. I did. I know a 
about planes. There must have been just enough gas in that tank to get him off the ground. What difference does it make how Fernandez was killed? I did it. But why, Annie? Why? I don't know. When Eddie got into trouble, I got panicky. I couldn't stand the thought of living in poverty with a man I didn't love. Fernandez was going to take his plane away from him, so, so I tried to stop him. Oh, I just wanted time till Eddie could raise the money. So you committed murder. I didn't mean to. I thought I was just disabling the plane so he couldn't take it. Eddie found out, went out to cover for you, and fell into Pena's trap. Well, I wanted to tell them, but, but Eddie said he'd never be convicted. Don't you see? That's why I can't stand the thought of him being in prison for something that I did. Where are you going? To Captain Pena. I would like no, to... No, you're not. He wouldn't believe you. And I wouldn't want to think of you on that island either. Not when I can hold you like this. Oh, Mike. Then you'll help me. I've got a plan. I know it'll work. I'll make your proposition, Janie. What? I'll go along with you. I'll help Eddie escape. But you've got to go along with me, too. You've got to tell me what you know about the ruby. The ruby? Yeah. Where is it? Who's got it? Level with me. You too. So that's why you came to Puerto Rosario. Partly. Mostly because you were here. Now tell me what you know. I don't want to hear any more about that ruby ever. I've been hunted by the police, Paul, and now you. I don't know anything about any ruby. I don't think about anything. You hear? Sure I didn't even saw it. I didn't know All I want to do is get any free so I can get one good night's sleep again. good an opportunity as I'd have to search her place for the ruby. I parked a short way from the house. It was a cinch to climb the tree next to the terrace and get inside. been there before me. And from the look of the place, if they hadn't found the ruby, I certainly wouldn't. I was 
being driven somewhere. When I opened my eyes, my head felt as if it had been squeezed in a giant nutcracker. Man in the chair with wheels. Did I hear you speak, Mr. Comet? We are happy to welcome you back. Our host has some interesting pets, don't you think? Your aunt. This is your associate, Mr. Mike Cormack. Mr. Torby is an old and accommodating friend. Shall we discuss the ruby? No, we won't. If you wanted to talk to me, you'd have to break my head and kidnap me. I doubt whether you would have talked to us otherwise. You doubt? I was under the impression I was working for you. So were we. But now you have been bought by the woman. For money or... Uh... Other inducements? I thought that's why you hired me. Because I could get close to her. Young man, we will not be deluded. You have obviously gone over to the other side. Why else should the woman and her uh, dear friend Armand have chartered a cruiser and stocked it for a long trip? How are you three going to dispose of the ruby? I don't know anything about a cruiser. And I'm beginning to think you're nuts. There was no sense to killing the kid. He didn't know where the ruby was either, did he? You're a very reckless young man. We made a deal, Boslin. A business deal. A simple matter of investigation. But you didn't say anything about murder. Now look here, The I... kid I know you killed. Where you fit into the Panasco killing, I haven't figured out yet. But I will. In the meantime, stick this in your big fat head. If you think I'm going any further with this ruby business... I don't like your attitude. Not one little bit. Your heart. I take it that you have been listening to our uh, conference? Yeah. I've been listening. The young man requires persuading to talk. <laughs> Mr. Cormac, where is that ruby?
beat my way back to town, I was a pretty sick pigeon. But I had to play this game out fast, or I might find myself sitting on that island with Eduardo for the rest of my natural life. Saba 347. Janet, Mike, I've got to see you right away. She gave me a song and dance about a lamp she was going to pick up at Armand's. It took me a minute to get the picture. The cops were there, and she couldn't talk. The only thing I could figure was she wanted me to meet her later at Armand's. an idea you're a dangerous man. For you or for him, what do you think? I think he's jealous. But Janet, all Shut right. up. Do I talk in front of him or not? About what? Of you, Eduardo. And a kid named Miguel who was killed last night. What do you know about Miguel? Where did you go last night, Mike? I went fishing. Now, what about Miguel? Talk. Oh, it was terrible. Someone broke in to rob me, I guess. I don't know what they expected to find. You're lying. They were looking for the ruby. I, I've told you before. I don't know anything You're about lying. the ruby. You've got to stop lying. Look, you can't talk to her. My God! I've been beaten, badgered, hit over the head, and mixed up in three killings. And believe me, I'm going to find out why. Mike, you don't think that we had anything. I'm through thinking. And I've had a belly full of double talk. Mike, I didn't want to tell you anything because I didn't want you involved. There's no reason why you should be involved. Go on, talk. Suppose I refuse to tell you. What would you do? I'll turn you over to Pena. Even if it involved me? Yeah. Mike, last night you offered me a deal. Which one? That if I told you about the ruby, why, you'd help Eduardo escape. All right. You have a deal. Oh, Mike, Mike, you better sit down. Please. I could use a cup of coffee. Oh. Paul, Paul, get him a cup of coffee. What is this setup? Set up, darling. Just a good friend of mine and Eddie's. Start talking again. I'll tell you and you what can I... be here any time. Tell you what I know. All right. It's a remarkably large ruby. There's a Madonna carved on it. It's a relic of some ancient civilization. Where did it come from? It was brought to Paul by a man named Turbic. That figures. What do you mean? Go ahead, talk. Well, Turbic offered Paul and Eddie ten thousand dollars if. They'd take the ruby and fly it to the States and deliver it to a man named Barsley. Ten thousand is probably worth twenty times that. Well, that's why I was so desperate for Eddie to keep his plane. Why, if he could have just earned that ten thousand dollars, why, we would have been in good shape again. Where's the ruby now? I don't know, Mike, honestly. We think that Eddie must have hid it in the plane the night before he intended to take off for the States. But we couldn't get near the plane after the crash. Paul thinks that Eddie must have hid it before Pena's men could pick him up. Why didn't this come out in court? Eddie wouldn't even tell me or Paul about it. We think that Eddie expects to get the ruby back if he ever gets off the island. And that's why you want him off the island? Oh, I'll never lie to you again. You mean too much to me. <laughs> Meaning what? If Eddie knows where the ruby is, we do expect to share in it. That's true, but it isn't my main motive, Mike. I want him off my conscience. Oh, Mike. I wish we could forget this 
whole nightmare. Go back home. You wanted coffee. Nobody makes coffee like Paul. Yeah, I saw him. He makes good coffee. You said you had a plan about Eduardo. We have. We've got it all figured out. All right, let's have it. But Janet, this is safe. You think you can handle it without him? No. Then tell him the plan. Their plan was just amateurish enough to work. Paul had gotten the setup from an ex-con who had been on the island for years. It was no Alcatraz we were going up against, just a loosely guarded penal colony with barbed wire fence around it. The big risk was getting back to the mainland without being stopped by a government boat. And that's everything. Now let's go over it again so I've got everything straight. According to Eduardo's last letter, he was in the infirmary. Right here. I hit the beach here, cut the barbed wire, and get into the infirmary and bring him back. Correct. We get him on board the boat, proceed south, where your friend in the power cruiser picks him up and takes him across the border. We would have done it ourselves, but neither Paul nor I are very good with the boat. How about the rest of the equipment, the raft and so on? I've been gathering them a little at a time so that Pena wouldn't get suspicious. All right. Call your friend and tell him it's tonight. Tonight? It's tonight or never. If Pena picks me up first, we're all dead ducks. But on such short notice... He says tonight, Paul. It's tonight. Give me a hand. I hope you've got your signal straight with the... Skipper of that other cruiser. He'll meet us at Point San Dimas. Fine. Now, don't go in any closer. If she starts to drift, throw out your anchor. And if you hear gunfire when we hit the beach, come in fast and pick us up. I understand. How about you, Paul? Well, frankly, I'm frightened to death by the whole adventure. <laughs> that makes two of us. I'm sorry if I gave you a bad time. It's all right. I just hope that you and Eduardo will get back safely. Leave him to me. Promised you half the money, didn't I? You promised me a good deal more than that, my dear. I hope Cormac hasn't changed your minds. You take the oddest time to start making love. Start the engine, Paul. The engine? Start the engine and head back toward the mainland. But if we're not here when they leave the island, they'll be shot. Will you start the engine or do I have to do it? But, Janet, I don't understand. If you don't understand now, you never will.
What do you want? Who are you? Name's Cormac. We met before. Of course. Janet's friend, the assistant DA. Not anymore. Mike Cormac, yes. She was in love with you even after I married her. But she thought I had more money. Amusing, isn't it? We'll laugh about it later. Right now we're getting out. Janet's offshore in a boat, so let's get going. You mean she's made arrangements for me to escape? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't think she'd resort to murder, not more than once, anyhow. She told me about that. She didn't mean to kill Fernandez. Oh, no, of course not. She meant to kill me. What? What? <laughs> You've been here too long, brother. Yes, yes, I have had much time to think. Would you like a cigarette? No. Mr. Cormack, would you like to know how Fernandez really was killed? I'd like to hear your version of it, but some other time. Thank you. It's, you know, it's so pleasant to have someone to talk to again. My loving wife knew that I had to get the plane so that Fernandez wouldn't get it. She also knew that I had a rush job to do. Sure. Deliver the ruby, I know. Oh, so she told you that. But what she didn't tell you was that she doctored the fuel switches in order to kill me. But. I had trouble with my car on the way to the airport. Fernandez got there before me, took the plane, poof! <laughs> Senor Fernandez. You're crazy. If she wanted you dead, why go to all this trouble to get you off the island? What? A truly wonderful way to have me liquidated. I must be stupid. Look, you are a lawyer. You've heard of the Leif Fugam? Law of the fugitive, yes. As long as I stay here, I am safe, right? I suppose so. And no good to her. But as soon as I escape, or even try to, I am a fair target. I can legally be shot by anyone. Correct? Yeah. Now, my dear Mr. Cormack, I am not going to leave this room. I'm not ready to be shot, legally or otherwise. You must be wrong. She's waiting out there. And that's what you think? Of course that's what I think. What do you think I'm doing here? I'll give you ten to one that she's ditched you. Furthermore, I'll bet that she has already made arrangements to inform the authorities anonymously, of course, that Eduardo Martin will plan to escape tonight. That's quite a plot you've hatched. If you don't believe me, go down to the beach and see. Not me, senor. I think we would be met by a dozen guards with itchy trigger fingers. Such a clever girl. You know, even if the guards didn't shoot me, I'd still be a dead pigeon. How's that? Because, my gullible friend, the penalty for just trying to escape from here is death. That is why so few try it, why it is so poorly guarded. But why would she want you dead? Ah, I'm glad you asked that. One hundred thousand dollars, my life insurance. The last value I am to her on this earth. Our dear little Janet would stop at nothing for that kind of money. You're lying. What? You're lying. If you knew all this, why did you take the rap for her? Why? 
Love is a peculiar drug, my friend. Sometimes love is a weapon. It takes a long time to get it out of your blood. You look like a man who might know that. Aha, the alarm. You see, they think someone is trying to escape. It's a shame we didn't bet. Ten to one. How oh, nice. You come to tuck me in? No. I was told... I better go get the sergeant. Hold it. Take me to your commanding officer. I want to talk to him. Well, move. Such a clever girl. to see me. Mike, I'm so relieved that you got back safely. No thanks to you. Oh, darling, darling, if you know what I've been through, you couldn't talk like that. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. Paul was too frightened to go through with it. As soon as you left us, why, he wanted to turn back. Why'd you let him? Darling, I didn't. I didn't. It was terrible. I fought with him and he fell overboard. Oh, there was nothing I could do. Go on. Well, by that time, several boats were in sight. Oh, I couldn't take a chance on turning back. So Paul's gone too, huh? Oh, darling, I'm glad you're here with me. Safe and sound. It was almost another story. I got Eduardo as far as the beach before they started shooting at us. They killed him? Yeah. Just as we hit the raft. I was lucky. About two miles out, a fishing boat picked me up and brought me back here. Tell me about it. You uh, are including me in, aren't you? But definitely. Oh, Mike, it's going to be wonderful. I've been making such plans, my head's swimming. This calls for celebration. How about a drink? Make it a double. (laughs) 
I like to work things out neat. Such as? Well, such as I've got everything in this little pigeonhole about uh, Eduardo and Paul. But Carlos and Miguel, I can't quite figure... Do you have to? <laughs> I'd like to. Let's try this on for size. Your boy Miguel killed Carlos. That I'm sure of. The question is why? Maybe because Carlos knew where the carved ruby was. When I went down the house and talked to the old lady, there was a kid there with a bike. She sent him someplace in an awful hurry. Maybe to tell you that someone was trying to talk to Carlos about the ruby, huh? <laughs> it's your story, not mine. Well, let's see. You were afraid I'd try to bribe Carlos. You knew he was a sucker for a buck. So you had Miguel kill him before I had a chance to talk to him. You're pretty smart. Uh -huh. But Mike, I told you before, I don't know anything about a ruby. But I still can't quite believe. I wonder what would happen if I turned you over to the police. I wonder if they'd put a rope around that lovely neck of yours. Can you joke like that? I don't consider that funny. sweetheart but that's exactly what I'm going to do Mike you wouldn't you wouldn't how do you like that right under my nose all the time now it all figures you took the ruby before you fixed the switches and he'd be killed you'd have the ruby and the insurance Mike you don't afraid it might be found so he had Carlos put it in one of his yes. little dadlets yes couldn't sell the ruby till I got it out of the country. And I didn't have enough money to go anywhere, so I had to have any insurance. You had to have both. Oh. Mike, you make it all sound so... Violent, vicious, right. Darling, darling, I know I lied to you, but I, I couldn't help it. Sure, baby. You're a born liar. You're not going to do what you said. You love me. Maybe I do. I've laid awake many a night warning you. I probably will again. Mike! You can come in now, Captain. I've got the whole story for you. And a little bonus beside. Ruby Virgin. Al fin podré devolverlo al museo. At last I shall restore it to the museum. I'll take the ruby. We have had a rather long and tedious wait, Mr. Comic. But all things being equal. It was not without its rewards. The ruby, please. You'll have to take it, Parslan. I should hate to see it damaged. You'll still have to take it. As you wish, Mr. Corbeck. Lawrence? <laughs> You can take it from there. By the way, what charge are you holding me on? Well, I doubt if we could convict you on any charge. On the other hand, you have aided the cause of justice. Thank you. And the ruby will be restored to the National Museum. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, no, I the key. Thank you. Yes. For nada. me of someone I used to know. The 
is a happy man who has a faculty to forget. Adios, amigo. Buena suerte. <laughs>